So first we will actually discuss something that is not machine learning, but it's actually pattern recognition. So patterns has an old history in, in bioinformatics. And the reason is because there are many sequence features that can be extracted in short motifs or patterns. And for instance, you have the, the signal peptidase, so the, the serine active peptidase that is called, uh, that has a signal, it should have a P and then an A followed by, by a, a G or S something, and then an S, then an M, then an X. So you have a sequence pattern there, as you see here. And basically, you can describe exactly and very quickly if a, a sequence has this or not. So it's like a local sequence search, but with extreme strict rules. And it originated from the blocks database, from the ones that we use for making the blossom matrix. So now you have these patterns in these blocks that will say, oh, here we have this information. Nowadays, uh, uh, the patterns are collected you know, in databases like ProSite, but they are a bit old-fashioned. They are often quite short, limited length. There are some motifs that are very good, but they particularly are very much yes, no. They don't have a probability model of it. Say, so either you have it or you don't have it. So, for instance, if you look at the patterns before, we had a protein, it has a G and S, it has it's okay to have G and S in position two, three here, but it doesn't say that it's much more likely to have an S, or it may be even it's like 1% of the chance to have an L, L in there. So it's, very, it's not as, as expressive as the profile of the market model would be. But you can, you, you can basically do it as a, you can do also, also you can instead of have a pattern, you can have a profile. And which is more flexible than a pattern, but it's, it's, it's a bit so, slower searching. So the pattern database is ProSite, I will demonstrate here in a second. So uh, you see, if you go to ProSite, you find a lot of patterns. For instance, if you go here, we can look at uh, ProSite here, and you can take an example. So if you want to find this one, pattern. So here you have a description of the fibronectin type 2 collagen binding domain signature. You see that it has a representation that is uh, has the pseudo-sulfur bonds here, etc, etc. And it keeps on having a pattern that you can see down here, the highlight right now. The cysteine, something, two X's, the problem, etc, etc. So you have rules, exact rules for saying it. You can try to figure out yourself what exactly all these rules means. And there are uh, in the Swiss plot, there are 55 proteins that have, uh, have this. There are uh, one, two proteins that are not missed, that are of this family, etc. And there's some references and citations back. So you can actually for instance, uh, take a sequence here and you scan it. So this is, um, and you see you have this sequence here, which is, you can see here. And you can see whatever domains it has, but also you can see, for instance, it has a cleavage site by electrolysis uh, here. It has a disulfide bond pattern here. It has uh, a cup domain, it has a domain with profile. So there are rules, clear rules here. So this is quite useful if you want to annotate the details of a protein. So this is an example of a, another phosphorylation site scene, just that tells you that the site might be phosphorylated. So of features that are not directly homology based uh, compared to what you would do if you do a sequence search. So basically, if a sequence search finds domains that are conserved by homology, but in patterns then we find things that are unique to a sequence that doesn't necessarily be conserved by homology, for instance, like uh, phosphorylation sites, etc.